Hey, what's up everyone? My name is George and this is SaaS Master. Today we're going to check out WP Vivid, which is a backup and migration WordPress plugin. Now it's going to make your life way easier when you try to migrate or backup and it's going to make you feel safer knowing that you have a backup in your hosting provider plan or in your cloud storage. So that's pretty cool to have. Now, right now this is their main site, WP Vivid, and something I want to show you is their quick pricing because I'm in the ultimate version. So you have these lifetime deals and I'm gonna leave a coupon in the description which is a pretty good deal. And one of the things I wanna tell you is that I'm in the ultimate plan. Why am I saying this? Because you're gonna see roles and capabilities and you're gonna see the white label version. So you can actually white label this and you have the option to create stagging. So that's not available in the basic plan. So let's jump into my WordPress site and this WordPress site I already migrated from another hosting plan into this hosting plan. And it was super easy doing it with WP Vivid. Now you have a whole bunch of settings and the first thing I'm gonna show you is what localhost is and the remote storage. So the localhost is obviously that it stores in your hosting plan. So if you don't have a lot of space, this is not recommended. But if you have a cloud storage, you can just click here, but you have to activate the remote storage first. So you have all these options available, which are pretty good options. You got free options and you got paid options that work really, really good. So in my case, I'm connected to P Cloud, and if I had I, if I had connected more storages, cloud storage, I'd select the one that I'm going to use as a default. So right now I have P Cloud, and that's available. So you can see right here, like I said, you can do it locally or remote storage. So if you choose remote storage, what it's going to do is it's going to create a backup in your hosting plan and then it's going to auto upload it into your cloud storage. So it's easy and automatic. So to create this, you would select this, for example, let's just select that one. Next is to choose what to backup. So in this case, database and files. Now it's really important for you to understand if you're not, if you don't have a lot of knowledge in sites, you have to have database and WordPress files to a site to actually work. So in the database, the passwords are stored, the users and other plugins use it to save information. So it's important to do both. But if you don't need that, you can also just do database, oh, sorry, files and exclude database or only database or custom backup. In custom backup, you get all these options available. So you got the WordPress core files, the database, themes and plugins. Now let's just say, you know what, I don't wanna make a big file so I can remove the plugins that I'm not actually using. So hey, don't back up these. So you got all these options available in, cost, in custom. Also, let's just say, hey, you know what, the uploads file, I think it's really huge. I wanna do it in a separate file or I just don't wanna upload all that content, you remove it. Or you can just select just like you would right here and select what files to actually select that you want to backup. You can do some comments right here and you click on backup. In this case, let's just back up the database to show you really quickly how this works. And let's just do only database, right? Let's back up. So it's gonna read it and it's gonna show you right there. Yeah, I select the remote storage. So you're gonna be able to see how it's going to create this backup and it's gonna upload it into my cloud storage. So you're gonna see starting uploading. Whoops, that was quick. So there you go, it succeeded. Now it's in my cloud storage. So as I said, I'm using P Cloud, and these are the files right here. So I had three files and now the, now the database is right here. Easy and fast. But what happens if I wanna restore this site or if I, what I did, right? I changed from hosting provider to another hosting provider. So I went to my new hosting provider, I pointed the IP over there, I, well, I downloaded WordPress site, and what I did is I installed WordPress site, I installed the plugin, and I was able to view my backups that were in the remote storage. So I would click right here, backup and restore. I'd select the remote storage. And here are my two backups. So this is the one I did right now, database only. And here's the whole site. So I don't have to worry about files missing or something like that because this did the whole thing. So it was easy and fast to do a backup and migration. So in this sense, you could just do a backup, you know what, just to have a backup, right? I wanna have a backup of the whole site just in case something happens. Just in case, in case my hosting goes down or my files are lost, but I have this backup available. Now you can also schedule these backups. So if you go to scheduler, you can do the schedule, obviously by week, hour, fort, what? fortnightly, every 30 days. 
and you can set up what to back up, where to back it up. So in this case, I'll select my remote storage and it's gonna do it every certain time like that. There you go. You can do incremental backup also and it's easy to set up. You got remote storage, like I said, the information and you have the key option. So in this key option, you can generate a key that's only gonna be available for the time limit that you set it right here. And what this does is to do an auto migration. So for an easy to do transfer from one to another, both have to be live, you can just put the key here and you would be able to do a backup and migration really quick. You can also do a send it to remote storage. Now there's another option that says right here, option two. Like I said, I'm in the ultimate version. So if you're in the basic or the free version, you won't have this. So the stacking side, what it does, it's gonna take me to the options right here. It's gonna jump over here. And you can see my create stacking side right here. And what it does, it lets you create a, a second side with the same, it's like a, a snapshot of your site with the forward slash and whatever you set it to. So forward slash, my new site or my test site. Now these are just examples and it's gonna create its own slug right here and it's gonna create another WP admin where you're going to log in. So it's a complete copy of the same site but with a different one. So that is stagging right here. So it's a really cool tool, really useful for, for doing testing. For example, you're gonna install some, you know what? It's gonna be a plugin that's, I don't know, uh, really complex or a theme that's really complex, you can do it in this site to not create problems on your main site. So it's pretty cool to have that. Let's go back to WP Vivid and let's jump into settings. Settings are really important, especially if you're on a shared hosting. Be aware of this. When you have big sites and you want to back up and you're in shared hosting, you might create problems because you have limits. You got memory limits, you got IOPS limits, and a whole bunch of limits. So in advanced settings, you can enable optimization mode for web hosting or shared hosting. Now, take note that it's gonna take more time to back up, but it's safer because it's gonna do it slower and then pause it so it doesn't break your shared hosting plan. So that's available there. You can compress files every 200 megabytes. So instead of having a whole bunch of files, you can it will compress it into lap, well, files of 200 each. Or you can do more or less. Now you got more options right here for timeouts, timeouts to restore. All these settings are available because of this, because when there's problems, when you're trying to back up in shared hosting, you can change this information to help you do this even better, All right? So it's easy. Next thing we have is the role capabilities. Remember in the, let me go back, in the freelancer and the ultimate version have these available. So you can turn this off, turn it on, depending on the role of the right here. So if it's editor, author, contributor, can they use it or not? So it's pretty cool. You got the debug option. Let's go back to this. You got all these options available for debug and this really cool feature which is called white label. Now white label helps you change the name of WP Vivid to your own. Now, why is this a useful tool? Well, let's just say me, I create sites for clients and let's just say, hey, you know what? I'm gonna charge extra because I'm going to integrate a backup tool. So my client's gonna say, oh, really cool, right? So I'm gonna say, you know what, for an extra, 20 bucks a month or a hundred a year, I'm gonna install a backup tool for you. And your client's gonna say, oh, cool. So that's you can do that. But what you don't want your client to know is what's the name of WP Baby? Because you don't want them to, hey, you know what? I'll buy it directly and I don't pay you. So in this case, I can say, um, I can say SAS Master Backup. And the slug is gonna be, whoops, SAS master and the support email if they're going to send the support email to hey you know what something's going on i'm going to change it to so for example info sassen.co which is my site and the author site is sassen.co now if i save this they can still still view white label but if i tick this on it's going to remove the white label option i'm going to leave it like that because i'm not going to use it right now it's my own site so check this out, SAS Master Backup. Now it doesn't say WP Vivid, so how cool is that? Uh, be aware when you're using white label is that this slug, when you back up your site, it's gonna use this slug instead of saying WP Vivid. Why am I telling you this? 
because when you're gonna migrate a site and you wanna load those files into the new site, if you don't go to white label first and change this, you won't be able to load the files. So you have to obviously change it back to WP Vivid in the name of the backed up file or update your white label to say this. So it actually detects it. This, what, what I'm talking about is this right here. Let me show you. So right here in backup and restore, when you drop files in here, if it's not from WP Vivid, it's not gonna accept the file. So in the sense, when you white label it, it doesn't say WP Vivid, so it's not gonna detect it as a file from WP Vivid. So return it back to WP Vivid or update your white label when you're gonna do a migration. So I hope that helps because I took a while to figure that out because I migrated a big site that's like 12 gigabytes to transfer and I had this problem until I solved it. I'm like, oh, this is why. And there you go, guys, hope that helped. Well, guys, remember in the link, well, yeah, in the description and in the comments are gonna be a coupon code to have a big discount for this price. So after being a lifetime and having a discount, it's well worth it. Well, guys, my name is George, this is SaaS Master, and I'll see you guys later.